Oh, drinking a bang? What's wrong with you? What? You got a death wish? <laughs> yes, Dude, I do. I certainly do. I, I say I have a death wish as I sit in my new baby room. Guys, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> you lean against the crib. <laughs> uh, for the bluffers, uh, I've been kicked out of my of my studio because I am having a baby. I'm not having a baby. My wife is having a baby. I'm just present. And thank you, thank you to the two people applauding. In fact, and most of you grimacing in pain. Uh, yeah. But yes, it's true. I'm having one, so I I'm trying to find a new home for the Bluff Council. Uh, the baby is coming next week, so this is this won't be it, guys. But make and do, make and do. By the here, time here. you're watching this, the baby, the baby will, will be, be already here. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the baby will make appearances. <laughs> yeah, it will not get paid. Doing it a hundred times this episode. I, you know what I thought as I watched that shot, as he, as he's, as he's just overtly, awkwardly flirting with uh, Charlie at the in the, the little class. He puts it on and smiles, the Tom Cruise smile. I was like, do you think Tony Scott in that moment was like, you're welcome, Tom Cruise. I just gave you a career. You're now a movie <laughs> star for the, that shot. Like <laughs> that's, that that's a movie star shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're talking about Top Gun, in case you didn't know. Top Gun. Top 1986? Gun. 86. That sound right to you? It does. Mid-80s. I just knew it was mid-80s. It's probably 86, I think. <laughs> Classic Tom Cruise vehicle with uh, yep. Val Kilmer along for the ride. Young Val Kilmer, young Tom Cruise. You got yeah. uh, Anthony Edwards in there as Goose. Tim Robbins pops up. Great, great collection of yep. Tom Skerritt and Michael Ironside and just like 80s greatness. Meg Ryan. Young Meg Ryan, a real Young treat for everybody. Just a great, a great time. Welcome to the world. Yeah, absolutely. Such a unique movie. This where is do one you where start? <laughs> I don't know. Start? This, this one's hard because I have, I have some things. I have some things. I, I'm not going to be well liked after this episode. I don't. Here's the thing. Okay, I'll do this briefly. I have loved Top Gun forever. Like you know. Remember watching it as a kid and liking it, and then I remember really getting into it in high school. Shout out to our friend Richie Rauscher. Richie and I were like obsessed with Top Gun, watched it mm. all the time, uh, went to like midnight showings of Top Gun, uh, like quoted it nonstop. R we wrote a play in high school that that literally lifted the, the, the locker room scene and just like transported it into this play with our characters. Hell no, man, I can feel my stuff. 30 seconds. I give Dale the glass, Dale goes like this. I say, hey, yo, Dale, where'd it go? Dale says, where'd what go? <laughs> but the same dialogue, you know, that's right, Iceman, I am dangerous, all that shit. Uh, we go to the Great America, which is a theme park out here, and they have a Top Gun ride, and we just go and just ride it over and over. Love Top Gun. Haven't watched it as much lately, and then <laughs> watched it right before recording this, and I was just like, this is one of the wildest, weirdest, strangest movies of all time. Uh, and it really confuses me. And I don't even know why I like Sex it. I sexually? Love it. What's that? Sexually? Well, it makes me feel very justified. <laughs> I don't know if we want to start there. I don't know if we want to start with the fact that everyone in this movie clearly wants to have sex with each other the, the entire time. I'm just, it's, it's, apparent, like it's apparent, though. Like, it's... This is this is some deep rooted eroticism in in this film. It's it's really ironic because I remember Richie and I and our friends would joke about like the reason we loved it so much was because it was like the epitome of masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like Top Gun, then you are not a man. Man, 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 man. I think everyone thought that <laughs> at, at that time. And then now looking back, it looks like uh, someone trying to cover up the fact that they're gay. Like someone <laughs> who's not ready to admit to themselves <laughs> like, that I like dudes. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. I'm, I'm fascinated by like how much of that, if any of that, is intentional. Because I, I read a lot about that after watching it again. Um, and you know, there, there's a lot of attention has been paid to it over the years. Lots of think pieces. Uh, Tarantino, I guess, has a scene in a movie from the early 90s where he kind of brought it into the 
national consciousness uh, widely where he goes on this kind of improvised monologue. Top Gun is fucking great. What is Top Gun? You think it's a story about a bunch of fighter pilots? Yeah, it's about a bunch of guys waving their dicks around. It is a story about a man's struggle with his own homosexuality. If none of it was intentional, that makes this one of the most hilarious films of all time because it is so overt. Like yeah. it is so overt. <laughs> okay, well, let's come back to this. Let's not open okay. the Top Gun episode with the homosexual subtext, which is okay. abound everywhere. <laughs> Abounds everywhere. Okay, so I have, I have two extremes for this movie. I have what I think is a Oscar level, dare I say, Oscar level trait or quality of this film that I just think is obviously outstanding. And then I have something that I, just, that I think is awful, like just awful, it's just a bipolarity. Um, and I, so I don't know where you want to start. A or F? Let's, let's start with the greatness, because people who probably found this episode are waiting for us to say good things oh, about to it. To say something nice about it. And okay. they've already, we've already <laughs> lost them. <laughs> yes, they, 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 didn't, they didn't click on it to begin with. No one um, finds these episodes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's very true. When I watched Top Gun, I was honestly blown away with the cinematography. I really think the cinematography is working at a very, very high level throughout consistently, shot to shot. It is, the composition is fantastic and the lighting is fantastic. The, there's these beautiful silhouette shots throughout, these beautiful rich colors, this beautiful atmosphere and texture, which I love in these types of films. I mentioned it on our, on our Point Break episode. Like there's, there's, a, there's an atmosphere, a texture to a lot of the rooms that they're in. There's an ambiance that is set through the cinematography and the lighting, and it's beautiful. It, it really, it's, it's taking itself really serious in a good way. Yeah. From a, from a composition, uh, from a cinematography standpoint, uh, and I have to give some credit to the directing as well. I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand, but yeah. I, I, I was not expecting that because I definitely watched it as a kid, <laughs> and obviously all that stuff is sort of lost on me. But yeah. um, uh, watching it now, I, I was expecting to be as popcorn as the story would, <laughs> as I remember the story to be, but it wasn't. The cinematography really takes itself very seriously in a great way. 100%. I knew that's what you were gonna say when you said there was Oscar level stuff. I mean, I think, I think it announces itself right away at the beginning of the movie too. Like the little quick montage uh, of the opening credits of just the jets coming and going from the uh, the aircraft carrier and all that stuff. And the editing too, I think the editing is a part of that. I think, I think the craft of this film, from the director Tony Scott, to the DP, to the editing, to anyone that's working on the cinematography, like the gaffers and, and all that stuff, just like yeah. next level stuff. Really, really, it's a, it's, it's a, it's really a, great. it's a testament to just the way that, that films mostly used to be handled, where it's we're like, made, yeah, we're making yeah. a, a kind of cheese guy action movie, summer popcorn movie, but we're gonna, we're, we take this seriously. But it is, it is really, really good. Tony Scott is a, a, a was a, a very uh, talented, long tenured director with a very distinct style, and uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous looking film. Something that I, I get a kick out of is like everyone is sweaty all the time, like all the profusely <laughs> sweating in every scene, just dripping. I, I prefer to say glistening. I think they're, <laughs> is, they're, is, they're glistening. It is more than glistening because there they're, are just beads. Just, there are just beads all over everyone. And I, I hadn't really noticed that before, I don't think, where I'm just like, what the fuck is everybody just like dumping sweat? Like they have, they have uh, some kind of issue, a glandular, a glandular problem. It's, it's uh, but it adds it's, to that texture overall. And yeah. then, as we talk about with older movies a lot, just uh, the practicality. Like, I don't know mm -hmm. that there's a single shot in the film that stands out to me as like, oh, that special effect didn't age well, because it all seems damn near real. Like, you know, they're, they're filming real planes, they're, they're filming real missiles, I mean, just all that sort of thing. There's nothing where, you would think of a movie from 86 that features some really, uh, you know, complex dog fights, where you'd be like, oh, there's gonna be some rough, green screen effects and stuff, and then not really. There's not really anything that jumps out. No, no. You can't, you can't talk about Top Gun without the score and the Kenny Loggins. I, well, think, <laughs> I think both of those things, the music as a whole, I mean, that's, that's damn near Oscar level, and actually was. One uh, best song, Take My Breath Away, which is a fucking beautiful song by Berlin. Take my breath away. That was original to this film? 
Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, Oscar winning, Oscar winning. Oscar winning Top Gun, as well <laughs> it should. Say it forever. Yeah, so uh, I always loved Take My Breath Away especially, but Kenny Loggins, my God, what a run. What a run for Kenny Loggins in the 80s. Footloose oh, is one of the best songs of all time. I love Footloose. I prefer the Caddyshack song. I would also say something that's really fascinating and excellent about this film to me is, at least for me, and I think general audiences, it makes you care about something that you might not usually care about, and that's a hard thing to quantify, which for me, it's it's jets, it's fighter jets. I don't, I, as a kid even, and now, uh, I don't really give a shit about fighter jets in the sense that like, I don't think they're cool, they're not so, I mean, it's not that I don't, I think they're uncool, but you know what I mean, they're just not a thing that gets me going. I don't yeah, yeah. like engines and races and fucking NASCAR and jets and trucks, and I just don't <laughs> care about that stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm creative, I'm soft. Um, but, <laughs> but like you're invested in this and you think it's cool immediately just in the opening credits, because I think of what we talked about. I think the directing does a really great job of like, okay, I don't personally care about the specifics of this, but everything just looks and feels so cool that like I'm in, like I care about this, you know? And I, 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 I think this is... I think the performances also. I mean, I don't know if this is the time you want to talk about the performances, but that's another real positive of, of this film, in my opinion. Everybody is on the same page. <laughs> there is a clear goal in this film, and it is to be cool. It's yeah. to be cool in a myriad of different ways. <laughs> yeah. And everybody is cool. Every character is, you're like, God damn, that guy's fucking cool. Or that girl is fucking cool. They're just cool. Yeah. And I, I want to be like those people. They always look cool. Everybody's yeah. just fucking cool the whole time. Yeah, it's like it, it's like a hour and a half commercial. Like every every shot is perfect. Every motion is perfect. Like just everything is fucking cool. It's just everything. Yeah. And I think that was the only goal going into this film. Yeah. Make me look cool. All right. Yeah. It's an amazing thing to accomplish. And then it speaks to uh, why perhaps why this movie was used as a, such a recruiting tool. <laughs> for for the armed forces, like yeah. I, that they had uh, they had yeah. navy recruitment booths set up in the lobby of movie theaters uh, for this movie, which I think is is wild. And I read that recruitment went up five hundred percent for people who wanted to be navy pilots in the aftermath of of this film, which is crazy in of itself. That is crazy. That but is. You crazy. look so cool. I did remember. I do remember thinking as a kid. That like this is one of those movies, a lot like Point Break in some ways, where you're like, you watch this movie when you're ten, and you're like, oh my god, this is what life is. Like I, yes. I never had any serious plans of going into the military, but you start to think like I could do that, and I should do that because like that's what being a grown up is: is you get to wear these cool uniforms, you fly jets, you meet chicks in bars. You know what I mean? Like it's just like this cool adult world yeah. where you having a, everybody's laughing, having a good time, and you're the star. You know? Yeah, but that that is that is the flaw of this movie as well. It's it's positive. You can look at it as a positive, and I think most people do. They remember how awesome it looks, but it is extremely surface level, and I think that's the con. There's there's no depth to this to this film whatsoever. Is that was that your F was that your F thing? Well, my my F thing is it's it's tied to it. I, the 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 thing that I think of the most as I'm watching this whole film is is there a lower stakes action film in the history of film? Yeah, no, I there isn't. I, like th this, I can't. The, the the entirety of the film is about guys training. It's not even really an and action trying to film. come in first place. Like this is your um, this is your hook. This is your um, this is your emotional tie-in. Like I better I gotta be first place. It's a, it's it's an hour and a half of a dick measuring contest. Get the fuck out of here. It's terrible. Like it's that is terrible. I just I I, I was blown away. I just because I, I don't I didn't remember. I just I know I've seen it and I've seen parts of it and just and just being swept away by how cool it was. But yeah. watching it again, I go, what's the point of this? What is the point? And why it, would I care? Why would I give a shit if you don't come in first place? That's the emotional, like it's just the dumbest thing ever. Sorry. No, no, no. I, I agree with a lot of that. And then there's a little part of me that wants to play devil's advocate to my own please, agreement. Please, that makes for a better episode. 
<laughs> yeah, you're wrong, you fucking idiot. Uh, <laughs> Good, go with that. It's, it's the greatest story of all time. No, I'll start with, I agree with you on this rewatch where I was just like, it starts to feel like it's not really about anything. Like, it's just sort of like, almost like slice of life. Like, you're just kind of watching stuff happen and there's no real clear goal or thing to accomplish. And then I had this, this whole internal monologue as I watched, I was like, well, no, the thing that he's trying to accomplish is coming in first, being the best, and sort of in the process of that, overcoming his own demons and overcoming this, this memory of his father and his family name and all that stuff. And so there's... Who cares? Well, no, <laughs> like, well, no why here's do the I thing. Care? I would say the devil's advocate thing, just briefly, not even that I 100% believe this, but I think that there is, it's interesting to think about and go into that like a big film like this uh, you know, today, obviously, it would be about some huge high stakes, save the world thing, but that's what we complain about a lot now, too, where it's like, oh, everything has to be a fucking world threat, and why can't we just have, like, a small, like, like this is almost like that small, intimate story that that we pine for, and we have in, in, other, in other films where we're like, why couldn't it just be that? Hang on, hang on. And so I think that that's, <laughs> I think that that's, like, there is some value to that. Yeah, I know, the bang's got you juiced. <laughs> the bang's got you juiced. Um, there's potentially some value to that. All right, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, I'll come back to my other point. <laughs> I don't disagree with you. It, to me, it's a very simple fix, is th the beginning of the third act, they introduce a, a surface level made up conflict. Just, just like introduce that in the beginning of the film and make them going through training, and, and it, training has to, they have to stop training to be part of this mission and they have to learn on the fly. So it just like these, these, these are the best of the best, but they're still not ready. So they, but they have to figure out a way to like save the day. And it could be a small conflict. It doesn't have to be an extinction level event, but just mo move that conflict that just comes out of randomly out of the middle of nowhere to the beginning and have that sort of happen throughout underneath everything. That's a smaller level thing. Again, not like the world is gonna end, but just like this hostage mission that they have to get to save this person or whatever the fuck they said it. You know, like there, there's a way to do it, to give some sort of, yeah. because the, the worst part of it, in my opinion, is, is when Goose dies. Goose dies, and yes, it's sad when people die and we like this character. Love Goose. But it, but it was a training mission. Like it's a, it's a, it's a training mission. Like, it, I feel like that undercuts that emotion so much that they were just like practicing. Like, they're just like, and then the guy, when he talks to the chief or whoever that other, the, you know, the sergeant or whoever's in charge, he compares it to like Nam. He's like, when I was in Nam, we lost 10 guys. Like, this is not Nam. Like, this is yeah, not, this is, this is, this is not, a stupid this is, mistake. we're just learning how to do this now. Like, yeah. it's so hard. It, I just feel like that, knowing that the whole time, it just, it takes any emotion out, out of it. Any emotion out of it. Yeah. Well, I agree with I agree with that. Like, hey guys, good job, <laughs> you graduated. Here's a mission. Like at the party, like Jesus Christ, like that's rough. Some of you have to depart immediately. We have a crisis situation. Because it's not even the third act, really. That's just like the end of the third. Act. Like it's just <laughs> just like got to get them doing something. Got to shoot yeah. some missiles. Uh, yeah. So if that was sort of alluded to, or if that happened just while they were training, look, you guys are the only guys that are close. You're not ready yet, but you gotta do this. And then they but you learn gotta about do themselves this for some reason. Yeah, in that like, moment. All of this comes back to what I think is, this ties together to what I think is kind of the biggest issue, in my opinion, maybe, is the pacing. I think this movie, for as, as well as it is directed visually, and like the vibes, like all that stuff is great, but pacing, it's so weird. And that, like, it's so weird, the way this movie is paced, uh, and that ties in with that weird crammed in thir third act action sequence, Goose dying, the romance, which is is forced in 10 different ways, which we can talk about, but like just like the ins and outs of that, where it's like, oh, they're getting together. No, no, it, now they're not. Oh, no, no, they are now right away. Oh, no, but oh, no, now it's awkward. Now we're not going to see her for the third act. Now that's not even a part of the movie anymore. Like, it's just really choppy. Uh, and so, but what, uh, what the point I was going to get to, which is sort of part of that too, is I think this movie's not really an action movie. Like it's 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 mislabeled as an action film. It's really like then a what character is it? study. It's like a character study of of these guys and this 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 like I said, like sort of slice of life of these pilots of these people in this profession. 
Um, because there's the action is just planes flying. Yeah, like, no, it's you know very what I mean? Like, there's only so much you can do. It's very dynamic, especially that final dogfight. Beautiful shots, uh, all that. But it's not like there's like any fighting or there, it, it's not it's not structured like an action film. Correct. It's structured like character development. It's study. Lots of long conversation pieces. Lots of emotion, romance, and then just like so, it feels maybe the 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 error the issues with pacing feel amplified by now all of a sudden there's like a action-y sequence in this movie that's not really an action movie. <laughs> I, I, I did think that too. I, I think you just wind up categorizing, you, not you, the general you. I think people just wind up generalizing as, as an action film because what else do you call it? I, I mean, I, I get your point on sort of a, a character study. I don't know how much I agree with it, but I can see where you're coming from. If it's a character study, then this film thinks it's a lot deeper than it is because I think it's as shallow as a, as a puddle. Like I, I think it is just as surface eye candy, just if you shut your brain off and just experience it, it's a fun time. Like I think it's a quintessential It's one of movie. the best. I think as yeah. far as shutting your brain off and experiencing it, it's one of the best I would of agree. those ever. I, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. I think it is, I think that's what this movie is. But for you to say it's some rich character study, I go, well, then this movie is the worst film, film of all time. No, like, no, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's like some rich character study. I don't think they succeeded at that. I'm just saying, like, I think that's more of what this film is. Like, if you go into it and you think, oh, this is going to be a great action movie. It's not. It's not a great action yeah, movie by it's, it's any stretch. It's not a stretch. great anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great turn your brain off and have a good time, and it's full of so many iconic moments. I think it's really well written in terms of dialogue. I think the dialogue is really well written. So many, so many quotable lines. Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. But it's a great time. I think the best example of that there really isn't a deeper meaning or level for this film is the volleyball scene. <laughs> I think that's the perfect example of, of there's nothing more here. Because why? Wh why, Everett? Tell me it's why It's iconic. That's, it is. But why is it in the film? To be iconic. <laughs> <laughs> that's it? Just, well, that's, it's like, that's an interesting conversation. And like, I'm you. joking a little bit, but like, th the serious side of that is like, how can you say why is it in the film if when anyone thinks... 40 years later, looks back at that film, that's one of the first things they think of and how cool it was. Like, it's in there because it's cool. I, I just, I think it just goes back to the earlier point is that there's, if your best scene, if your most iconic scene is pointless to your film, then there's, no, then there's nothing to the film. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just well, saying we need to accept that. We need I to say, say that's, that's what this the best film scene, is. But like, and it's, I also, I, you can't say it's pointless if it, I sure can. It is. I don't, I don't think you can say that it's, is a fact. I don't know, but Tell that's, me the, that's point. the larger question here, not just for this movie. If it's like, if it serves the purpose of just reiterating how cool everything is and this vibe of like, because that's the scene, especially as a kid, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna get older. I'm gonna play volleyball on the <laughs> beach with my buddies. And we're gonna, I'm gonna chicks play volleyball. around. <laughs> Listen to yourself. Okay, we did. You and I beach volleyball team. So that's, that's not rushed I mean, to. That's that's part of that. Criticism that's part of that. We were a great team. <laughs> Runner up two years in a row. Oh, <laughs> lost the championship game two years in a row. <laughs> we had some good years. We had some good years. That's true. We were fucking great. <laughs> but, I take it all back. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's the best part of the movie. But no, you, you know what I, you get what I'm saying a little bit, right? Is like it just because it doesn't serve, let's say for argument's sake, the narrative or the story directly doesn't may, mean a scene is worthless. You know what I mean? It's like, let, no, let, let's look at a, a famous scene, Tarantino. No, you're just, you're just, put, you put too much on story. So let's look at Reservoir Fuck Dogs. <laughs> the first, the first scene of Reservoir Dogs, Quentin Tarantino famously, they're all sitting around a restaurant table and he goes on about like a virgin. It's all about this coos who's a regular fuck machine. Now I'm talking morning, day, night, afternoon. Dick, 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 dick. How many dicks is that? He breaks it down. It's this huge pop cultural moment. It's a huge. It's it's it sort of helps set the tone, right? Because tone is a very important part of filmmaking, but it doesn't serve story at all. That's that. Tarantino's not even a fucking character in that movie. Past here's scene the difference. One. 
Here's the difference between those two films, is you're setting the tone. It's the first scene of the film. This is midway through the film, we take a 10 minute break to watch a volleyball game. That is stupid and pointless. There's a very big difference in what you're saying. I don't know. I think, I think it's just wrong for you to say if something doesn't directly support the narrative of a film that it's pointless. If it comes midway through the film, if it comes in the, 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 the bridge between the second and third act, like it's, it's pointless and it shouldn't be in the, like it has no bearing on the film. But if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do something to develop character or tone, you do that in the first act. That's, there's no Fine. rules like that. You're, well, you're, you're continuing. You. I, I'm telling you. You, you, you can establish, but you wanna continue. You don't just establish and then, okay, it's, we did that work. Like you have to revisit that throughout a film. That's crazy. Not that you, not, not to this level and not to this, because this is, how long is that seed? Six minutes? Seven minutes of your, of your film? Like, there is value in having actions uh, developing your characters. You, you need that. And that actually is a, another point that I have around Val Kilmer. I don't think he has enough actions to help prove his character to be the character that they set him out to be. We can discuss it. So I see the value in what you're saying. So have your, uh, your actors, uh, your characters take action that speaks to who they are, yes. But to this degree, it becomes pointless. There is a balance. There is a balance here that I think this scene misses. It's fun, it's awesome, it's iconic. It doesn't help the narrative of the film. It doesn't move anything forward. It doesn't really even give me more insight to these guys. Like, I already know this about them. They're macho cheese balls. Competitive. I, I don't need, yeah, competitive. They want to beat each other. Like, I, I don't need that scene to tell me that. I know that already. Yeah, so well, what you're, not gonna, you're not going to get me to uh, I, get, give an inch on the volleyball okay. scene. It's great. We don't have Classic. an inch to give. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, the scene that has the line, Mother Goose, you pussy. I'm not, I'm not, it's, I'm not it's complaining gold. about that. It's a great line. <laughs> and also, if you're going to make the iconic, uh, hidden gay subtext film of the 1980s, you're gonna need that scene where he's late to his dinner with the woman he's been pursuing the whole time because he's out playing with the boys. So if you were to, if, you, if the filmmakers were to come out and tell me that that's the subtext and we're really trying to, there's a whole bigger story here that we're all missing, I stand corrected. But I don't, I don't stand corrected at this moment in time. <laughs> so obviously as we, as we alluded to, as we talked about earlier in the episode, the the potential homosexual allegory <laughs> going on beneath the scenes here is yeah. is is present and it's hard to watch this movie now if not impossible now that there's been so much made about that without thinking about it and when you watch it and you're looking for it it's almost overwhelming mm -hmm. there's it, it's it is there in in a hundred different ways and like I said earlier if it if all of it was wholly unintentional. Uh, I think that's that's wild. There's a lot of little gay innuendos amongst them, where they they at least two or three characters say, "I've got a hard on," and then the guy says, "Don't tease me." I mean, that's like the first the first yeah. scene in Top Gun. That's like the first line spoken yeah. when they get yeah. to Top Gun. This gives yeah. me a hard on. Don't tease me. And they all sit with their arms around each other a lot. And I don't want to speak out of turn here, but just due to. Uh, rumors and or mysteries about Mr. Tom Cruise's personal life. I don't know if, and the fact that Tom Cruise also doesn't have a tremendous amount of, I would, what I would call believable sexual chemistry with uh, his female co-stars ever, uh, especially in this film. I don't think like, it. He he seems kind of awkward to me in all of those exchanges and that sort of, like retroactively in hindsight amplifies some of these subtext rumors, I think. Cause it's, I don't know, Tom I think Cruise he's, is a little, he's, he's, he's hiding something. You don't, <laughs> what are you hiding Tom Cruise? <laughs> I don't Answer think we want to know counsel. what Tom Cruise is hiding per personally. I think Tom Cruise is, he, he made some deals with some devils, <laughs> I think. And I've met the leaders of leaders. Okay. I've met them all, so I say to you, Sir C.O.B., we are lucky to have you, and thank you very much. I don't know if he's, I don't feel his, he's awkward. I think he's, he's young, he's handsome, I think he's charismatic, uh, you know, I think he's cool. 
And I, I'm, why, why would you ever be surprised if any woman would fall in love with him? I don't, I don't get a sense of awkwardness from him. I didn't say, yeah, I don't, I don't think that. I think he's super cool. I think he's super handsome. Uh, and I think, I think you could totally see, like, again, movie star moments the whole yeah. time. Like, yeah. this guy, this kid, this kid, this kid's made for the pictures, honey. Like, sure? and you can see why <laughs> this movie, hell yeah, exactly, helped launch him to the, to the stratosphere here this, uh, in a big way. But I just mean, like, his one-on-one -on -one scenes with Kelly McGillis uh, don't exude a tremendous amount of, like I said, believable sexual chemistry. Like, he, he, Even when they have sex? To me, that, that those are two people having sex who have never had sex before. <laughs> what? Dude, what that's, is... That's method. That's method. So, so much, like... <laughs> yes, please show slow, us. Do it closer to the camera. Show us how that kissing goes. <laughs> With the oh, tongue yeah. outside oh, the yeah. body. I remember being a kid and watching this movie and being like, wait a minute. I know nothing <laughs> is, about is sex. Is this how you do this? I have a feeling that this is incorrect. <laughs> like, why are you just licking each other? It's so weird. It's so weird. Where are you going? I'm gonna take a shower. The best line of the movie to me in a movie that has a thousand great lines. A lot of good uh, lines. Whose butt did you kiss to get in here, huh? Well, the list is long, but distinguished. Yeah, well, so's my Johnson. Yeah, so's my Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> big fan of that line. E ever proved. <laughs> and obviously. Hey Goose, you big stud! That's me, honey. Take me to bed or lose me forever. That's an I was gonna say, take me to bed or lose me forever. I, I, I forgot that this is where the where it came from. It's great. Meg Ryan yeah. comes in and, and just kills it for her three it. minutes. <laughs> I want to make sure we give a shout out to the actor. Uh, God, my writing is so bad. I think it's James James Tolkien. Who's uh, who's the the guy the the military leader at the beginning and at the end who's smoking the stogie the whole time? Yeah, and he's yeah, the guy yeah. who says like your 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 ego's writing checks, your body can't your body cash. Your body can't cash. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and his whole his whole delivery, such a great '80s guy. Uh, but he's just like the perfect guy for that character, just fucking chawing on this uh, cigar and just like, I gotta do, I gotta give you your dream shot. I gotta do something here. I I, I still can't believe it. I gotta give you your dream shot. I'm gonna send you up against the best. You two yeah. are going yeah. to Top Gun. Like, just <laughs> great. And then, good I luck, mean, gentlemen. Yeah. It's just, he's, yeah. he's so good. He's so good at every moment. Uh, yeah, that is, that's that same, again, point break vibe of that grizzled captain. Yeah. Uh, you couple of hotshot kids think you're so great. Yeah, God damn it. God yeah. damn it. Like, yeah. and, I, <laughs> and of course, and I knew your father. Your father would be ashamed of you. Like it's just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't exactly got the best name in the Navy or whatever. You know, it's just such great stuff. Great <laughs> so, stuff. You're a hell of an instinctive pilot. Maybe too good. Well, let's get to Tom Cruise here in a minute. But I just wanted to say one thing. Um, I read, I read on, I think, Wikipedia that a pilot died while shooting for this film, like a, a aerial acrobatic pilot, long experienced, went out to get some shots with a camera on his plane, lost control, crashed, died, never recovered his body or the aircraft. Wow. Isn't that like, what a, what a weird little mystery. Yeah, I, that's super interesting. Like said, said he radioed back, like, oh, I'm in trouble, I'm in a lot of trouble here, and then went silent, and so I'm like, if you didn't recover the body or the aircraft, how can you say with confidence that he crashed into the Pacific Ocean? Like, and how can you not find that stuff? Like, that, that's that's weird. Uh, yeah, that's, like, uh, but especially if it was a camera, like if it was for the purpose of the film. Yeah. Well, he didn't go by himself, you know, like, right? He's not just Well, alone he was flying doing... on his own. There was cameras there's no mounted, other... I think, on the plane. But there was no crew, like, there, there, the that's DP's the not, whole thing like, is very strange. at home base, like, on a radio. Yeah. Like, there's no other crew members to have some sort of insight into this. Yeah, and He's then just I like, couldn't find a lot of the camera. I'll see you later. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find a lot of deeper detail about his death in particular. This man's name was Art Scholl, and the film is dedicated to him and his memory. Um, but I was like, that's I'd like to know more about that. <laughs> like, that's, that's something I want to look into. Yeah, interesting. Okay, let's talk about Tom Cruise, please. I think it's our first time talking about old Tom on the... Sh sure is. We've already made a lot of allegations against him. <laughs> we you assume... have. I, I, dear Illuminati, I don't... <laughs> yeah. I love Tom Cruise. 
I, I love Tom Cruise as an actor and as a performer. I think he's he's given us a lot of really great stuff. His level of stardom was just insane. Like he was a Hollywood superstar and- You don't think he currently is? No, because I think we know enough about his personal life and that he's kind of a strange guy and there's a lot of rumors and Scientology and his relationship with Katie Holmes being like allegedly being forced by the church and just like, there seems to be a lot of secrets. Uh, and uh, you know what I mean? Like he, he's, he's, he seems to be kind of a strange dude, complicated, you know, <laughs> like a complicated character in, in real life. And I certainly don't think, um, you know, he, he's nothing like he was back then, like fame-wise. It's it's not like his, his it, because of those questioning shadows. I kind of think like once you reach a certain level in Hollywood, a certain level of fame, which I think Tom Cruise has eclipsed, I think it's hard to go down from there. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I think you're always that. Like Clooney, in my mind, is one of those those types of stars. Brad Pitt is is one of those types of stars. Like, they'll just it doesn't it almost doesn't matter. Like they could just have bomb after bomb, and and they may not be as relevant, but they'll always be that level of star because they're 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 always one movie away from reminding us. Oh yeah, I'm one of the biggest stars on the, on the planet. I would put yeah. Tom Cruise in that category. Yeah, I, I mostly do. I think I think now. I mean, he really just does Mission Impossible movies, though. So that's yeah, kind of tough. Yeah, feels like that's all he does. Yeah, that's really all he does. The fallout of all your good intentions. The thing that I res that I do respect about Tom Cruise, uh, f uh, from a distance, it seems like he has grown to become more and more passionate about the craft. He is not. Uh, sort of the opposite of what I assume The Rock is. The Rock is just like taking paychecks and doing safe bets and being an action hero. Where Tom Cruise does look, he, he looks at, <laughs> at this Maverick 2 and goes, well, I want to be in real fighter jets. And we're going to find a way to do this the right way. And I feel like that's been documented about this project. Is, and they had, yeah. had some hiccups along the way because of that, because of his passion to do this film and to do it the right way. He finds yeah. ways now to, to put himself, you know, Jackie Chan light as you, as you, as you coined the phrase, but you know, he'll really be on top of a mountain. He'll really climb yeah, that yeah. glass thing. Like he'll do that shit. Like he's, he's finding ways to be, um, uh, reignite his passion for the, for the film and not just sort of put it on a green screen because I want to go in at 9 a.m. On, on a studio lot and be home by four. Totally. You know, like, and I respect that. I respect that, that passion, again, from a distance, and I don't respect the secrets and the dead bodies that I ever <laughs> has said that are in your closet. You don't need to be in that closet anymore, Tom. I'm not in here, though. Yes, you are. I'm not, I'm not in the closet. Like I love that he that he seems to take that stuff so seriously, um, but I almost wonder like if that's like he had to pick something because he was facing uh, I don't want to say irrelevance because that sounds so serious and heavy, but in the aftermath of like revelations about his personal life and him jumping up and down on a couch on Oprah and, and just being weird. We've never seen you behave this way before. I know. <laughs> Have you ever felt this way? Before? Like he's like, I have to do something to separate myself and get back to the level I want to be at. I also think he has a tendency now, and we're just projecting as two people who know fucking nothing about the guy's personal life. Yeah, but like, nothing. he seems to want to still be the star of everything. And I, I've noticed that like those Mission Impossible movies get funding now from a lot of international sources. Like the the studio <laughs> logos that are at the beginning of those movies are like all over the Middle East and Asia and stuff, and you're like, okay, like, there there almost seems to be some level of direct or indirect or conscious or subconscious apprehension about putting him in a mainstream th project that he is not entirely in control of, and I don't know if that's all on his side or if that's the studios or just, like, he seems to be sort of on the outside, even as this famous face, making hugely successful films for a major IP, He's still kind of on the outside of like the main in club right now. I do wish that uh, 
that uh, because his career has always been like he's an actor more than he is an action star, and that's what brought him to fame and prominence. Like a few good men, he's amazing in that movie. And yeah. uh, Born on the Fourth of July, he's very very good uh, in a lot of roles where he's very very good. But like he doesn't do those anymore, and I, I and that makes me a little sad. I'd like him to maybe join an ensemble or two and play yeah. the father. You know what I mean? Like he he still wants to be that action leading man, and it's like be be somebody's dad in like a cool indie drama. Like give me a little more of that range that made you such a, a prized talent. You know? Uh, I think that's that's great advice. <laughs> I, I think people would be hungry for that. You could still do your action film. Yeah. But but yeah, do an indie drama and where you're, you know, someone's dad. It's a great yeah. It's a it's a great uh, point. I agree. What what about Kelly McGillis? You got anything on Kelly McGillis? No. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, I thought the 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 whole romance is uh, forced. It's it's weird. Like it does, that it's doesn't forced. even need to be. What I I think is interesting about it is like you you can know you can understand why they felt like they needed a romance, but this movie is not about that at all. Like for it to take up so much of the second act, but then the third act she's just gone, and that's not yep. even a part of the story. Like that's they, weird. They could have done more with with her. I, I wrote in my notes. I was disappointed when you when the which I think is you know a good clever turn where where she turns out to be like an important officer. You know the Pentagon trusts this woman more than anyone. You know she's yep. she's his equal if not higher. Great, that's awesome. But in that first meeting where you learn that uh, Tom Cruise sort of like proves her wrong. It's like you can't do this, and he's like, "Well, baby, I did it." Like yeah. she, she should have, she should have checked him to prove her authority. And I don't want to say dominance, but authority. I guess that's the right word to prove that she's his equal, that she is providing value here, and she doesn't. Like Tom Cruise, well, yeah. By the end of that scene, she's like, "So you're the one." Like she's just yeah. completely deferential to his amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's just it, 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 she's subservient throughout the whole film, to some degree, and it's. Disappointing. The things you're telling me is like she is something big, and she's she's not. She is arm candy. It's a girl with a crush. Yeah, she's just like who I've fallen for you. I couldn't tell all the people in the room, but yeah, but I'm in love with you. Like all right. What? I always think it's so funny. He just shows up at her house. He's like, I'm gonna go shower. And she's like, No. <laughs> so you don't mind? I'm I'm gonna just take a quick shower while you're finishing up here. <laughs> yeah, I do mind. I read that in an earlier draft, his love interest was just like an aerobics instructor, like just in the area. And that then almost I'm makes more like, sense. <laughs> that, 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 yeah, like the, the, the fact that she's this more important character for the second act of the film and then doesn't have really anything to do with that almost just seems like it's unnecessarily complicating the story. Where it's like, I like what you said, where it's like it, he meets her, he tries to pick her up, and then it's revealed she's actually in charge. Like, that part is interesting. That's great. But then, she, but then there is no real agency after that for her. Correct. So then it could it could just be like a an airheaded aerobics instructor down the yeah. street. Because in the third act, she's going to be gone anyway. She's not really intrinsic to the story. She's Correct, and that, and that, so that's that's my that's my point. She doesn't need to represent all of womanhood. She just like don't set her up in a certain light, and then not pay that off, and not deliver on that. Like yeah. if that's what you want her to be, then just let her be that. Just let her be that character. Let her be an aerobic yeah. instructor who's just out for a good time, or you know they just meet happen have, you know on chance or whatever. Like that's fine to have that character. I kind of think at the end. Uh, the, the, it would have justified her being in the film if at the end she's the one who talks the sense into him. But that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she talks him and he goes, peace, I'm out. Yeah. And that's it. And like he, and, the, and then he comes back at the end and be like, I'm back, baby. And she's I'm like, sorry. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. But so she really does serve no purpose. I, again, no purpose. It's just she is, and I, I hate to say this, like I don't believe in this, but she is an accomplishment of his. It is, that's that's her purpose. Her purpose is to be beautiful and be an accomplishment. Be like, see, he's pulling tail left and right. Even this beautiful woman is yeah. someone he's he could gay. get to. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely not gay. <laughs>
Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, or even if you didn't, consider subscribing, liking the video, sharing, getting alerts, looking us up on uh, OnlyFans, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Uh, we love you guys. We appreciate you. Thank you very much.